What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys how to set up a static IP address in CentOS 8. So there are a number of different reasons you may want to set up a static IP address. Uh, one example I could give you is, is if you're hosting a web server from your house or from a different location, you want to set a static IP address on your server. So it can be accessed via the internet because when people make a request for your website, you have what they call an outside IP address, which is your home address. This is the one you will set to your domain name in the DNS settings. So when somebody types in, let's say keepitechie.com, then the DNS server will translate the IP address to your home network or home outside IP address. And then once it reaches that point, your home router has to translate the request request and send it to the proper device on your network to serve the website. Well, a static IP address will come in handy being that you'll give your server an IP address that only that server will have that IP address and always have that IP address on your network. And then you can open up ports, port forwarding and all that stuff and point this to the IP address of your server. That way your router, when it gets the request, it knows exactly where to send the request to and then your server will respond and send the website back to the person requesting it. So that's one of the reasons you wanna set up a static IP address because most devices in your home and most people have their routers set up to dynamically assign IP addresses, which those IP addresses are typically leased for a certain amount of time and then it'll renew the IP address or you'll get that same IP IP address it all depends on the way your router is set up but a lot of times if you disconnect from the network and let's say you go out of town for a week or so and then come back and connect to that same network you'll get it you'll most likely get a different IP address so anyway I wanted to do this quick tutorial just to show you guys how to actually set up a static IP address on CentOS 8 in case you guys want to learn how to do it and for this demonstration I'll be using the network scripts that are built into CentOS 8 so it's a very simple process but we'll walk through it I'll step you through it uh, it's very simple so you guys can get a static IP address set up on your server at your house if you need to so let's get started Okay, so I'm connected to my CentOS 8 server uh, and it's running in a VM. I'm connected via SSH and let's go ahead and get started with this. The first thing you want to do is actually find out what the device name is. And it's a simple command. It's basically IP and then you can press A, which basically lists out all the network devices on the computer. And if we press enter there, this will show us the loopback first. It always shows the loopback. And then if you have like multiple network cores, then they'll show up here. But this is the main network cord uh, that's created in VirtualBox. It'll show up the exact same way if you're using a physical machine. It's just this is a virtualized network cord. And I have it set up in VirtualBox as a bridge. That way it will pull its own IP address. But that's irrelevant if you're making these changes on a physical machine. So... Okay, now that we know what the network interface is, we can go in and modify the scripts in order to uh, make the static IP changes. And it's a file located in the etc directory uh, that handles this. And so I'm going to show you that command right fast. Uh, we're going to actually run sudo uh, nano and then etc system config, then network, network scripts, dash scripts. And then if you tab it out, It'll show you what's in there. It's it only has one since we only have one network device in here. But if you had multiple network devices, they'll have a script for each one of them from when you actually set up the install the OS. So that's the configuration file we want to edit. It may be different for yours because that device, that interface name may be different, but that's what you want to get into. So press enter on that and that'll open up the actual configuration script that we want to modify. Okay, and as you can see, it has a lot of information in there already. Uh, it's set up for DHCP. 
uh, by default. That way it'll pull its own IP address. And what we want to do is change this configuration file to only use static IP address. So in order to do that, there's a few changes we have to make in here. For the first change we need to make is, and I'm going to just go in order on how it's shown in this file. But uh, the first one you want to go down to is boot pro two, and you want to change that to none. So take out the DACP, change that to none. And this is all you want to change here. Um, but we need to add to this actual file. And what you want to add is the actual IP address. So pick an IP address on your network, uh, set it aside in DHCP if you need to, or exclude it in your DHCP rules in your router. And then once you figure out what that IP address is, then go in, go ahead on and type and type in what I'm going to type in now. And I'll link this down in the description box below so you guys can copy and paste if you need to. But simply all you have to do is go in and add IP, AD, or, and it has to be uh, specific. That way it understands what is that exactly what you're typing in here. And you want to type in the IP address. So 192.168.10.10. I'm gonna just give it 10 because I know that's outside my DHCP range. So I'm gonna use that, that IP address. And then the next thing you want to do is give it the net mass. And then we want to specify that. And I already know mine is 255.255.255.0. And press enter. And then we want to go down and set up our gateway. Uh, and that's simply gateway on here. And we go equal uh, 192.168.10.1. One that's our gateway, and then also we want to put our broadcast, which is always the last IP in the range. So, broadcast, and and I spelled that wrong, so let me go down and fix that right fast. And then that's equal to 192.1168.10.1. Two five five, and then you can also set D DNS server. So let's double space and then let's type in our DNS servers. I'm gonna go down and set them to. I have a local IP address, so DNS one, and then we can put my DNS server, which is one nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot three, and then we could throw in. Let's throw in one. Uh, let's throw in the gateway again. One nine two dot one six eight dot ten dot one. And so that's pretty much it on modifying this file. That's all you have to do. Uh, so we can con press Control X, uh, which and then type Y to save the changes that we made to it, and press Enter. And one thing I forgot to tell you guys, whenever you're making changes to configuration files like this, I always like to make backups of it. But since this was a pretty simple change and it's just a script, I didn't make a backup of it, but it's a good rule of thumb to always make a backup of your configuration files or install one of those version control applications on the server so you can manage all your changes to different configuration files because you can really mess up your system if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so the next thing you wanna do is reload the network profile because you have to let the system know that you have made changes. And this may kill my SSH connection. I'm not 100% sure, but we will see right fast. So let's go down and reload the connection. And the command to do that is sudo nmcl connection. And then reload and press enter. And we have to use sudo on this command. Okay, cool. And so I'm still connected. It reloaded the connection, but it hasn't really made the change until you actually take down the network interface and bring it back up. So what I'm gonna do, since I'm connected via SSH, I'm gonna go down and reboot the server just to make it simple. So I'll be right back with when the server's back up. So. Okay, cool. So the server is back up and running and 
I know that because uh, VirtualBox, I have it running headless so I can see where it's at uh, in the reboot. But uh, let's go on SSH back into this server right fast. And this will really let you know that the IP address has been updated because the previous IP address for it was 127. Uh, so 127, you know, was the dynamically allocated IP address for this server. But we set it at 192.168.10.10. So that should be the new IP address for the server. So this will really let you know that the IP address or the static IP address has been taken effect so by typing in that new IP address to connect to it um, and so right here it's gonna say uh, the uh, authenticity of the host can't be established when you connect to a server basically the fingerprint is put into their SSH file which it verifies the connection so if the fingerprint changes it's gonna be like oh uh, what's going on why is this server different now and it kind of sees it kind of looks at it as uh, someone may have hijacked the server or someone may have hijacked your key or whatever uh, to connect to it or your fingerprint to connect and you're connecting to a different server so that's what that that's why that's popping up right there but we can just type yes and that'll continue us connecting it it'll actually update it to our list of known hosts and that's what i was trying really trying to say with ssh it has a known host file where it tracks all the hosts that you connect to but anyway let's log into it right fast uh using our password and as you can see that ip address is is working now so if we run uh let's say ip a just to show you for sure i mean i wouldn't have been able to connect to it but just to show you anyway you know as you can see this is the device name and this is that ip address that we set up but that's pretty much all i wanted to show you guys this is a very simple way of setting a static ip address in CentOS, uh rail and oracle linux 8 you know you can go in and use these scripts to actually set a static ip address on your servers so please like share subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave a comment down in the comment boxes below and of course keep it techie